In the previous lesson, we learned what core data is and is not. In this lesson, we zoom in on the building blocks of the core data framework. As I mentioned earlier, it is key that you understand how the various classes that make core data tick play together. The star players of the core data framework are the manage object model, the manage object context, and the persistent store coordinator. This diagram shows how these classes relate to one another. We will use this diagram as a guideline during this lesson. The manage object model is an instance of the NS manage object model class. A typical core data application has one instance of the NS manage object model class. The instance represents the data model of the core data application. This diagram shows that the manage object model is connected to the data model. The data model is represented by a file in the application bundle that contains the data schema of the application. The data schema is nothing more than a collection of entities. An entity can have attributes and relationships, which make up the data model of the application. We explore the data model in more detail later. For now, remember that the manage object model is an instance of the NS manage object model class and it represents the data model of the core data application. A manage object context is represented by an instance of the NS manage object context class. A core data application has one or more manage object contexts. Each manage object context manages a collection of model objects, instances of the NS manage object class. The manage object context receives the model objects through a persistent store coordinator as you can see in this diagram. A managed object context keeps a reference to the persistent store coordinator of the application. The managed object context is the object you interact with most. It creates, reads, updates and deletes model objects. From a developer's perspective, the NS managed object context class is the workhorse of the core data framework. The persistent store coordinator is represented by an instance of the NS persistent store coordinator class and it plays a key role in every core data application. While it is possible to have multiple persistent store coordinators, most applications have only one. The persistent store coordinator keeps a reference to the managed object model, and every parent managed object context keeps a reference to the persistent store coordinator. But what is a parent managed object context? Later in this series we take a closer look at parent and child managed object contexts. This diagram also tells us that the persistent store coordinator is connected to one or more persistent stores. Okay, but what is a persistent store? Remember that core data manages an object graph. The framework is only useful if the persistent store coordinator is connected to one or more persistent stores. Out of the box, core data supports three persistent store types, a SQLite database, a binary store and an in-memory store. Each persistent store type has its pros and cons. Most applications use a SQLite database as their persistent store. As we saw in the previous lesson, SQLite is lightweight and very fast. It is great for mobile and desktop applications. Now that we know what core data is and what the core data stack looks like, it is time to explore how the stack operates in an application. The heart of a core data application is the persistent store coordinator. The persistent store coordinator is instantiated first when the core data stack is created. But to create a persistent store coordinator, a managed object model is required. Why is that? The persistent store coordinator needs to know what the data schema of the application looks like. After setting up the persistent store coordinator and the managed object model, the workhorse of the core data stack is initialized, the managed object context. Remember that the managed object context keeps a reference to the persistent store coordinator. With the core data stack set up, the application is ready to use core data to interact with the application's persistent store. In most cases, an application interacts with a persistent store through the managed object context. You will rarely, if ever, directly interact with the persistent store coordinator or the managed object model. As I mentioned earlier, the NS Manage Object Context class is the class you interact most frequently. The Manage Object Context is used to create, read, and update and delete records.
When the changes made in the object context are saved, the manage object context pushes them to the persistent store coordinator, which sends the changes to the persistent store. Now that you know what Cordata is and how the Cordata stack is set up, it is time to write some code. In the next lesson we create a Cordata stack and explore the classes we discussed in this lesson.